let's talk about what Azure Management Groups are. Azure Management Groups are a new type of resource that's been introduced to your Azure environment. Azure Management Groups allow you to create flexible and very maintainable hierarchies within your structure of your environment. Management Groups live above the subscription level and allow you to group your subscriptions together so that you can apply different things like policy or role access onto those management groups and have that inherit down to your resources. These groups are extended by a whole bunch of different capabilities within Azure, uh, and that's going to continue to grow as time goes on. So let's talk about the value of management groups. The first thing that you get out of using management groups is that ability to group your subscriptions. Grouping subscriptions into a logical group allow you to come up with new organization models or new structuring models that you can apply uh, within your Azure environment. I'll have a couple examples that we can go into in a little bit, um, but mainly what you can do is you can build out an organizational structure or an environment structure hierarchy based on what your needs are for, for your organization. One of the main features that also come in by grouping your subscriptions together with management groups is this allows you to apply uh, role accesses or policy accesses that inherit down to the resource. Applying a role, like an owner role on a management group, that would automatically get applied to the subscription resource groups and the resources that live below that management group. This gives you different capabilities to be able to control who has access to things and also what they can do by using policy. In addition to this, you have aggregated views above the subscription level. Today, when you go in to the subscription screen, you'll be able to see all the subscriptions that are there. But if someone from an organizational standpoint wants to see everything across the entire organization, you don't necessarily have roles on every single subscription that lives out there. With management groups, by applying a, a role assignment on one of those management groups, you have all the ability to see all the subscriptions underneath of it. So if you think about a hierarchy, there's a top node, applying a role access onto that top node gives you the ability to see all subscriptions across your organization. As we talk about mirroring your organizational structure, this gives you the ability to, to create a very flexible hierarchy that can be quickly moved around based on your needs. We know organizations have changed constantly, and that's normal. So having management groups give you the ability for flexibility really gives you a, a new way to deal with all those changes that your organization might be going through. It can easily scale up and down, uh, so you can start with maybe just one level underneath uh, for your hierarchy, but you could also scale it all the way up to uh, six levels deep. Our launching scenarios give you policy and role access, so we have these capabilities since we're a part of the Azure Resource Manager, a part of ARM. Other capabilities that we have available and will be coming online are Azure Cost Management. We'll have Privileged Identity Management, which gives you just-in-time accesses. And Azure Security Center is also leveraging management groups. So let's look at an example of what you can do with management groups. This is an organizational-based structure. This is something that mirrors your organizational uh, resource structure. So at the top, we have Contoso, which is the root management group. Every management group hierarchy always has this root level. This is the top level that is automatically given to every hierarchy. Underneath of it, you can structure your environment to be based on your different departments or subsidiaries or other pieces within your organization. In this one, there's Contoso Logistics, which is off there on the left, Contoso Financial, which is in the middle, and Contoso Manufacturing. Now, Logistics Manufacturing would have their own branches underneath of there, but let's focus on financial right now. For financial, and we're just showing two here, but there could be multiple more, but we're showing the IT part department of Contoso Financial, and we're showing the marketing department of Contoso Financial. This can continue down. This is only a two-level hierarchy. As I mentioned previously, we can go up to six levels, so this can get very deep. Underneath the Contoso Financial IT, you can see there's two subscriptions that exist there. Those subscriptions have resource groups and resources underneath of it. Because of that, what you can do is apply different policies and overall uh, role accesses on any level of this, this hierarchy. Placing something on the root level applies it to everything you can see. 
applying role access on Contoso Financial IT right there in the middle, that gives you the ability to apply those roles on top of all those subscriptions you see, so subscription one and two, and the virtual machines and storage that you see under subscription two. Again, everything inherits down. A different model, an example for two, is environment-based. We've seen customers build out their, their environments based on how they're going to apply policies and role access. So here we're showing Contoso Root Management Group again at the top. But instead of having the different departments, we see production, department, uh, development, and R&D. Because of that, this gives you different capabilities to apply policy and different role accesses at each one of these levels. So for example, for development, you're going to have less strict roles assigned on there. You might have only certain infrastructure teams that have access to the production environment. You don't want to give everyone access to production. But development, you're going to give them something uh, more people have access to because you're going to have your internal teams building out different applications. R&D, you might have very little policies on. Or you might have uh, policies that restrict more to what they can do within there. So these two models, an organizational-based model and an environment-based model, are what we're seeing customers doing right now. This is not what you're limited to. Since management groups are highly flexible and give you the ability to structure this however you see fit, you have the possibility of creating multiple different methods here. These are just two of our common methods that we're seeing people build out right now. So a question we get a lot about is permissions. What permissions do I need to be able to do management groups and how do I build my management groups? We are RBAC related, so role-based access control. So you need to use the role-based different roles that are built in right now to allow you to manage management groups. So the owner role right now is the top level role. This is something that as just an owner, which is built in within uh, role-based access control within ARM, this gives you the ability to create, rename, move, delete, assign access, assign policy, and read management groups. Again, think about how this would inherit down. If you're using an owner role, that would inherit down to all subscriptions, to all resource groups and resources underneath of that. That gives a lot of power. So when you're assigning owner access, keep in mind that you're giving owner access to everything below it. Contributor, which is similar to owner, but they don't have the ability to assign access or policy, gives them the ability to create management groups, rename, move, and delete them. Also, you have the readability. There's two new roles that we introduced with management groups. There's management group contributor and management group reader. These two roles give you the ability to scope those individual accesses to the management group level. For example, the management group contributor gives you the ability to create, rename, move, and delete. Also read management groups. If I was assigned management group contributor on a management group, I would not have the ability to create, move, or delete any sorts of VMs that live underneath of that management group in the hierarchy. This is because those roles are focused just on the management group. This gives you the ability to avoid assigning things like owner, which gives you owner on everything, to someone that would have uh, privileged access. Resource policy contributor is something that you can assign that gives people the ability to assign policies onto the management groups. And user access administrators the ability to assign access, but that does not give them the ability to create or move. The unique thing about assign access capabilities, if you give someone the, the ability to assign access, they have the ability also to give themselves a privilege role. So keep that in mind when you're assigning a users, user access administrator. Additional governance resources you can see here is getting started documentation. Provide us feedback. We would love to hear any feedback on any of this. And please join our monthly customer meetup. The link's here. Uh, we would love to talk to you more and take your feedback on how this looks. So let's start by creating a management group within the Azure portal. By going to management groups, which you can also find in all services, or typing search in here, you can come to the management group page. Right now, I'm looking at everything that belongs under the root management group. The first time you come here, you will see an experience that has a grayed out image in the front and it says start using management groups. By just selecting start using management groups, that gives you the ability to create your first one. You'll be able to see this view after that, and then it will show everything you have. 
This list gives you management groups and subscriptions that exist out there. So as I page through, we can see at least there's one subscription under here. I can go back to page one if, if you need to. To add a management group, we select Add Management Group, and we type in an AD. So let's say A new group two. If I want to show this as The display field is display names a, a, an additional field. It's an optional field that you have to create a different user-friendly name for your management group. What we can see here is the ID, which we don't use uh, GUIDs for management groups. We actually use a user-defined ID as your unique, unique identifier. When using PowerShell, CLI, or APIs, you would go by this ID here. The display name is just for the UI so that you can have the ability to show something a little bit different. Also, if your group gets renamed, uh, if an organization renames itself, you have the ability to rename what this looks like, but your ID stays the same. So here we created a new management group. We have a new group. By selecting details, I can go into it. Uh, the overview just gives you a general sense of what's going on, anything that's underneath it. I have the ability to assign different role assignments on here. So we can see here from this uh, example directory that we have owner, reader, and there's some inherited roles which are coming from management groups that are above it. Policies, we can also see what policies exist on this management group. Your scope's automatically defined, and so we can see that there's already not allowed resource types existing in this hierarchy. So the root management group has a policy that's applied, and we can see uh, it's not started, but everything's in compliance right now.